Well, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining me for this presentation on how to build and deploy a Hyperledger Fabric app in minutes. My name is Zach Danker Feldman, and I work as a blockchain evangelist at Zua. Now, I have a very limited amount of time to present today, so I'll dive right in. So first off, Zua is a Hyperledger certified service provider, and we uh, focus on an enterprise blockchain cloud applications. Our mission statement is to reduce barriers for enterprise blockchain adoption by making blockchain app development easier, faster, and at a higher quality. Now, this focus on blockchain app development has led us to focus on partnering with and natively integrating with four major blockchain as a service cloud providers. These include IBM, Microsoft Azure, Amazon, and Oracle. We offer a service that's uh, complementary to them, and as a result, as you can see in this diagram, um, our uh, underlying infrastructure operates on top of these uh, cloud providers. I'll come back to this later, halfway through my, dem my uh, demo, to give you a better idea of the scope of our platform, but for now I'll focus on these services and smart contracts layers on top. So our services, we offer an API gateway and middleware that offers asynchronous processing, uh, monitoring of API calls to ensure they're functioning properly, identities for uh, user permissions, uh, policies, including endorsement policies for endorsing peers to follow, CI pipeline, private ledger, and finally, uh, our lifecycle, which involves integrations with applications. These include uh, deployments on GitHub, CI CD on Jenkins, and extensions through VS Code. Now, on top of this layer, we have our two separate sections for smart contracts. These include the Zua managed smart contract section. Uh, for this, these are essentially pre built smart contract templates that implement high level APIs for popular blockchain use cases and allow you to immediately put the blockchain to use for use cases including assets records, and voting. I'll give an example of one of these later, a very brief one. We also offer a custom smart contract development um, in Go, Java, and JavaScript for our Hyperledger frameworks. Um, this is where our developer productivity capabilities really come out, and that's where I'll dive into primarily for my demonstration. Now, uh, before I dive into my demo, I just want to say that I encourage everyone to sign up for an account and immediately uh, begin playing with their own personal uh, ledger on the Zua platform because we offer free trials for up to 500 blocks. Now, to dive into the demo, here we have the Zua console with its various available features. There's essentially three sections on here. There's the custom smart contract section, the Zua managed smart contract section, and our off-chain integrations with popular applications, including DocuSign, QuickBooks, and Dropbox. Um, I'll dive into the custom smart contracts section first. So I'll go in here, and here you can see a list of applications that I had previously built. These are cataloged on the cloud for future use, very easily accessible. For this demonstration, I'll dive into, I'll uh, select Deploy New. I have my choice of DLT, but for now, I'll choose Hyperledger Fabric, and I have my choice of source, either the Zua GitHub, where you can pull from our repository, or your own public or private GitHub. You can uh, upload directly from your local architecture, or you can write code directly in the browser. I'll select this, name it HGF Demo, and under Networks, you can see there are several options. So I've pre-configured four external networks on AWS, Oracle, Microsoft Azure, and IBM. Um, so these are configured on their respective platforms, and then uh, smart contracts developed on our platform are deployed on top of these infrastructures. Uh, for the sake of this example, though, I'll use the Hyperledger 1.4 network. As a side note, the 2.0 framework will be, deployed, uh, will be deployed soon on our platform. I'll also use the Go language. Um, I'll use a sample to auto-populate this field, and I'll select Deploy. Now in the background, my own siloed Hyperledger fabric network is being deployed. Um, the underlying chain code is being instantiated, 
and much of the blockchain heavy lifting is being done for me. So it's abstracting away much of the complexities of, of smart contract development and deployment. Um, this is very useful for early stage projects like proof of concepts, MVPs, and uh, demos, as you can see here. Um, you can use one of our pre-built smart contracts for that um, in a centralized environment, or you can use our custom smart contract section in order to develop more mature applications and, 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 and distribute them. Um, right here, we have our API token. This is my means of identifying myself to the network and allowing me to interact with the smart contract through our APIs. I'll copy that. And as you can see, my app has been successfully deployed. I've been explaining each process, so it took a little bit longer than it otherwise would have. I'm sure you all could do it in under a minute, though. Um, so here we have the smart contract. I'll go to the API section, and here I have my API sandbox. I'll enter my API token and authorize myself. I now have permissions in order to invoke the smart contract. I'll select this one, try it out. I'll use the set function. And I'll execute this transaction. And as you can see, I get a 200 response code, a unique transaction ID, and my payload here. If I want to make an update to this key value pair, I can easily do that, select execute. And again, 200 response code, unique transaction ID, and my payload has been updated. If I go to the world state tab up here, I can see the most recent transaction, the most recent value for this key. That's because the world state shows the state of the world as it currently is. It's a typical data store. Now, if I go to the history part right here, um, I'll see the list of transactions that I've made on this, uh, on this smart contract. So this is the auditable, immutable portion of this ledger. This is, this is where the blockchain capabilities come out on the transactions tab. Um, it has its timestamps here and unique transaction IDs. To show off a couple other features that we offer as well, we have under the API tab, if I go to monitoring, I can see the list of API calls to ensure they're functioning properly. If I go to the identities tab, I can easily add a new identity with its own set of permissions. So I give it read and write access as well as the ability to manage identities. I select create. And a new API token is generated. Um, finally, now to get into the, uh, how to extend your network. Um, if I go to the networks tab at the top, I can see the list of pre-configured external networks that I had put together prior to this presentation in AWS, Oracle, Azure, and IBM. It's very easy to um, integrate those with, or excuse me, import those files to the Zua platform through going through one of these tabs here. If I click on one, you can see it's a drag and drop file. So once you configure those uh, infrastructures on those networks, including the orders, organizations, uh, certificate authorities, and peers, you can upload that file here, and it will auto-populate these fields and make it a very easy integration process. Um, if I go to the external peers tab, if I just want to extend my network by adding an either uh, observing peer or endorsing peer, I can do that easily through here. I'll, for example, click on endorsing peer. I'd fill this out. And then I would follow several easy steps, either to deploy on premises or on one of these networks. Set up, set up instructions follow here so that the process is very simplified, making it quick and easy for you. Um, returning to the diagram I showed earlier, everything I had been doing on the Zua platform prior to the network and external peers tab portion um, is in the bottom left portion, uh, right over here. This is entirely hosted on the Zua platform. Once I extended it, added an external peer uh, to this network, it transitioned over to the extended networks portion where the smart contract is orchestrated and governed through Zua but some nodes are hosted off of it on one of these cloud providers. Finally, if I decided to do an entirely autonomous network that was hosted and governed off of Zua, um, I could still do smart contract orchestration through Zua through licensing our API gateway and our middleware. 
um, to show a couple final features and briefly dive into our Zua managed smart contract. Let me just select the ledger tab at the top here. And this will look familiar to a lot of you. This is based off of the Hyperledger Explorer application. This is an easy means of navigating the transactions block, essentially everything that's going on within your ledger. If I go to transactions, this is a list of all transactions that have taken place across each of my custom smart contracts. I have both prior transactions here, and then I can also run through the blocks as well, and look at the hashes. Um, now to briefly show off one of our Zua managed smart contracts, I'll dive into this voting application that I've pre-built. Um, so each Zua managed smart contract comes with its own set of APIs and, um, and UI as well that's specific to its use case. For this one, I'll generate a new, a new identity. And with its API token, I'll vote for which, uh, which Hyperledger DLT is my favorite. So I'll select next here and select fabric. Don't hold it to, don't hold it against me. And I'll select vote. And my vote has been recorded in an auditable, immutable ledger. Um, since I'm pretty limited on time, I won't go into how these are, uh, I, I won't show the uh, APIs that allow you to play around with uh, the data here a little bit more. And since the uh, voting is still taking place, I can't get the tally just yet. But uh, you get a general idea of the features and capabilities that the Zua platform offers. Um, it significantly shortens the time to app. It uh, drastically lowers the learning curve, and it's distributable. So you can start in a centralized environment and then extend it out to create a multi-party trust model without losing any of your data. All this to say is that it, this is instantly available. You can immediately start playing around with this. And it allows you to focus on business problems, not blockchain problems. Thank you all so much. I'll take questions now. <laughs>